Hey guys, this is Brad Dyke. I'm doing three videos tonight because I know I've been a little slow. Sorry about that. But my garage sale's coming along, so we're gonna we've got to set a date and everything. So I'm gonna get rid of some of this gear so I can maybe have some funds to get something else to you bring to your table in the video sessions. Today, in this particular video, we're talking about something definitive. And that is very simple. To answer the question that was brought to my attention by some of my people who like to watch my videos is how on God's earth do I use all this gear? How do you just, how do you have all of this running? And when you look at it, it is a lot of gear. And this is not just the, the gear that I'm using now as versus what I have over there, which are six or seven more chassis and so on and so on. The key detail is, you mean, if you look at this, I've got tier clusters, I've got sets, I've got disc DASI arrays, I've got distributed server platforms, I've got the DX720s, I've got uh, more DAS arrays, two of them down there, a whole ADS cluster set down there, I've got Raspberry Pi set cluster here, I've got the Proxmox environment here with its repository data archives. I've got the KVM network. I've got multiple tiers of switches to do three tier switches, and I'll go into that detail more. I've got the test bed environments here, and so on, and so on, and so on, all the way down to the bottom to the beast. Yep, that's a Dell 910 down there, a quad, and it's a beast, let me tell you. So why? I mean, how, how do you even manage this? And that is a very good question, and I will show you how. So in a nutshell, what you actually saw in my racks are four separate environments, four sets of switches. And that's not counting even the 10 gig switches in the back end and the commonality of infrastructure. Now, commonality of infrastructure means that they have a single infrastructure that can pivot four different ways. Now, one crucial component of the infrastructure is my 10 gigabit backbone for data retention. Very important thing. It's isolated. It's out of reach. It's data platforms and database and data files all communicating to go to our repository backup solution so that all data is retained and secured now that's part of infrastructure that's always present but but the rest is not so how do you do this if you're a small person with small money and small resources you can get maybe let's say maybe you can get your hands on some Dell 7040s or some of the newer i7 mini PCs that are going for 80 bucks or something a piece. And this is your infrastructure. And you know, let's say you have 12 of these guys, right? Well, even running 12 of these can be a little tasking, can make the room a little warm, and can generate some overhead. And you might have to have two, maybe three network switches, depending on the types of communication that you're trying to do. One could be a Wi-Fi network versus a, a cable network for your cluster sets and so on and so on. Not counting any other devices like, you know, additional storage platforms or things like that. Or let's say you go even smaller. Let's say you go to Raspberry Pi cluster mania and you have 25 little Raspberry Pis and in something similar to this you see here's four that are set up here for the uh, Praxin style strategies for testing clusters um and you're you know you're getting into this and you really enjoy it and it's fun but frankly your bill goes up so how do you do this how do you break that hardware down okay so now it's time to be an architect get away from your hardware sit down with a piece of paper or a draft screen on your computer or whatever and you're going to design each of your systems a system, let's say, for ADS testing. You want to do Active Directory services. You only need two boxes. A primary and a secondary for your domain controllers. And it will give you everything you want. And how much bandwidth do you need? X, Y, and Z. And you can run this guy. And you could have other servers come in in your second tier. Like a web server. Or a database server. Or a specific log cess for Metastore data monitoring or a log transaction or whatever the point is each of those are add-ons but you don't need them all up and running that's the key secret 
when I do the work that I do in these in, in these particular racks, I only bring up maybe four machines at ever at one time, two network switches on the average, and one disk array. Now I have many different disk arrays. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different disk arrays so that I can compare performance matrices between 10,000, 15,000 RPM style spinning disks opposed to standard SSDs on SATA versus SAS interfaces and so on and so on and so on. But I only run one. See, that's the key. So just take a little time. Put it on paper. Matter of fact, put it on paper and stick it on your rack or on your cabinet or wherever you're storing your gear and say, okay, I need X, Y, and Z up online so I can do my Active Directory testing. Everything else is off. Don't waste money. Never promoted anybody to waste money. Even when you build your quads, you power those bad boys off if you're not using them. That's the smart thing to do because you're not made of money, right? And if you're using small little PCs, that's a definite indicator that you need to be careful about your money. As you get older and you get more developed and you can get more hardware from eBay and you start developing your own true rack enclosures, you're still going to learn the cardinal secret. Design to implement, implement what you design. That's the simple adequate which you want to follow. Follow that guideline. Your rack can do 20 different things on any given day. And you can bring one or even two of them up online and be able to meet the needs. And then when you're done, you power them down and you bring the others next one or the other one up and so on to do whatever you want to do next and so on and so on and so on. Look, most of the industry is geared to let you do demos on small format footprints. Do them for free. I don't care if it's LogSess or SQL Net or MySQL or Meta Run. There's always open free source code, but it only works principally on the low end stuff. Now that means your PC. That's why the Dell 7040s work so well because they fit almost everything out there in the industry. So it's a great starter kit to build yourself a Proxmox cluster for free. That's awesome. Or a MySQL, you know, step for, for transitional databasing and so on, and so on, and so on. So it always comes back to design first, architect your implementation, power up what you need based on what you've designed, and when you finish, power it off. That helps you live within the means of your air cooling, your power consumption, and what you can really absorb in a single night. So these are important details to help you understand just because, just, just, just because you've got this doesn't mean all of this runs at once. I have done it three or four times. I've had everything running for a massive ADS test model with a MySQL platform and a uh, Microsoft SQL platform. And my everything barely held. I was, I was, I was impressed to see that my HVAC work, but it didn't open the door about no more than once a day. <laughs> and it basically, I, you learn a lesson very quickly on how, how this can consume your resources that you have available. So the key detail here is to use your brain, use your design, work with your architecture, bring what you need up online, run what you need to learn, take it offline, bring up some other stuff like Docker and Jenkins and GitHub, that's a parity that's between you know, cloud services and your local resources. They don't require as much resourcing, but you do have local resources for your repositories and so on and so on. And you're thinking right. You're doing the right thing. You've got the right mindset as you go forward. So with that tiny little detail being said, my suggestion to everybody out there is, is you look at this and you say, gosh, this guy's got all this gear and he's doing all this stuff and he's doing... No. I had one thing, then I had two, then I had three, but I didn't want to affect the first two. So over time, they accrued. And that's how it happened. Then it gave me new resources. I could do th three tier enterprise deployments. I could do true enterprise modeling. I could do enterprise DevOps deployments because I had the resources at all three levels. Um, basically, I can be a cloud if I wanted to be. But those are all driven by needs. And that's what I'm promoting here with you tonight. Think about what you want to do first. 
get your resources, keep your resources. You'll need to probably use them in the future anyways for maybe new things like upgrades and so on. And over time, you'll have a small stash of resources you can play with. And then you might want to jump to 10 gigabit and learn how to transition your equipment there. Those are all great job employment kind of strategies and technologies to learn. And you've done it low on the dime and it's not costing you a lot of money. So think about that. This is Brad Dyke. I'm going to let you go. I hope this helped some. And you guys have a blessed week. Take care.